Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about another important form that our quadratic functions and their equations can be uh, expressed in, and that is what we refer to as vertex form. So we say that a quadratic function is written or expressed in vertex form if its equation is written as a times the quantity x minus this number h all squared plus this other number k. Well if our a uh, quadratic function is written in the special vertex form. The concavity, whether it opens up or down, is still going to be given by a. That a is the same a as it was in our general form or standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. But what's special about this vertex form is that we can read from it right away what the vertex of our parabola is going to be. It's always going to correspond to that point hk, where h is that number we are subtracting away from x and k is that constant that we are adding to the outside of our squared quantity. So whether we want to work with a quadratic function in that standard form or in this vertex form is usually going to be up to us. Sometimes they'll just be given in one form or the other, and that'll help us uh, make that choice. In this example, we are asked to graph the quadratic function f of x equals negative 2 times the quantity x plus 1 squared plus 8. So this is already in our vertex form. So we could uh, use our old approach, expand this function and do all the algebra and write it in standard form and then graph it. That's adding in some extra steps. If for some reason we wanted to go from our expanded or standard form and write a quadratic function in this vertex form, the way we go from standard form to vertex form is by using that process of completing the square. But in this example, we already have the square completed. We are already in vertex form. So we can get right to trying to graph this quadratic function. We still need those same pieces of information as before, the vertex and a pair of symmetric points, which ideally will be the x-intercepts. All right, so the nice thing about this vertex form is we basically get for free what the vertex of our parabola is going to be as long as we read our equation correctly. So remember, we have to think of this as x minus h all squared. So we'll have to think of that as like x minus negative 1 all squared. We always have to subtract that h value to find our vertex. So the x value of our vertex is going to be negative 1. Another way to think of that is it's going to be the x value that makes the squared quantity go to zero or disappear. So when is x plus 1 equal to zero? Well, when x is equal to negative 1. The k value or the y value for our vertex is always easy to read. It's just that constant hanging out on the end or outside. So right away we know the vertex of our parabola is going to be the point negative 1, 8. That's the big advantage of using our vertex form we get our vertex for free immediately. What can sometimes be a disadvantage when using our vertex form is when we try to find those x-intercepts. Remember, to find our x-intercepts, we have to solve when our function is equal to zero. So when is negative two times the quantity x plus one squared plus eight equal to zero. So the vertex form, we get the vertex right away for free immediately, but the x-intercepts take a little bit more work than they might have when we were in that standard form, right? We can't factor it right away uh, just because it's not written in that standard form. It's not all expanded. And we can't use the quadratic formula either because, well, it's not in that standard or expanded form. We just have to basically solve this quadratic equation using the uh, square root method, which you probably saw in an earlier uh, algebra class. But basically, we start by isolating this quantity squared. So we have to subtract 8 from each side. and then divide both sides by negative 2. Well, that'll give us 4 on the left-hand side, and now our squared quantity, x plus 1 squared on the right-hand side. And from here, we have to take the square root of each side of our equation. And this is uh, an important step where a common mistake is often made. When we are the ones introducing a square root, we have to remember we actually can have multiple solutions here. So we have to introduce a plus or minus sign to one side of our equation to make sure we recover all those solutions. And we always want to do that to the side that has just a constant term on it. So we get 
plus or minus the square root of 4, or plus or minus 2, is equal to the square root of x plus 1 squared, but the square root is just going to cancel that exponent of 2, so we just get x plus 1. Or, and sorry if I'm running a bit low on space here, if we solve for x, we get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2. So x can be equal to negative 1 plus 2, which is positive 1, or x can be equal to negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. So it's still not too bad or time-consuming to find those x-intercepts if they exist for our quadratic function when it's expressed in vertex form. We just have to do it a little bit differently using something like a square root method or approach instead of the quadratic formula or factoring. But now we have all the information we need in order to graph our parabola or our quadratic function. Our vertex is at the point negative 1, 8. And our x-intercepts are at x equals positive 1 and x equals negative 3. Right, and another little check we can do with this uh, using some of the symmetry of our parabola or quadratic functions is we know our line of symmetry goes through that vertex at x equals negative 1. And so our x-intercepts should be equidistant or equal distance on either side from that line of symmetry. So we have to go two units to the right from x equals negative 1 or our line of symmetry to hit our first x-intercept. If we go two units to the left, we do hit our other x-intercept. So that's a good way to check to make sure our work is looking correct. And so once again, my scale is not perfect here. So that's why it looks a little wonky. But we have all that critical information we need for our quadratic function. And furthermore, just by connecting the dots and sketching our graph, we see that this is a concave down parabola or a quadratic function. We could have also determined that just by looking at our lead coefficient or that a value. It was negative 2, so we're going to be concave down just as we see here.